Hello, all you wonderful people. Uh, I thought I'd better check in and tell you what's been going on. I um, learned that I can't use my glasses when I'm on the computer because it reflects too much, and so I don't. And um, I did get down to my dad's house, and the ending number on his bill was uh, $15.99 on the meter read and the uh, beginning number was like 19,000 and something and so what I think happened is that they changed the meters out and somebody couldn't figure out <laughs> the math and so going with that because we got down there and nothing was going on other than um, one of the neighbors uh, was feeding his I guess sump pump um, into my dad's yard and so that was the neighbor my dad was having problems with <laughs> so I picked up the uh, hose that he was using to push over into uh, that yard I just picked it up and made a big circle into his yard and made it go back into his yard now he can make it go back but um, if I'm down there, I'm not putting up with him because uh, he's got plenty of property. So he doesn't have to put it on ours. I mean, that's silly. And I'll put my septic, I mean, my sump pump on other people's land. But anyway, wouldn't, wouldn't ever think about doing that anyway. But I noticed something while I was down there. Um, for those of you new to the channel, I'm sorry. I'm Lisa and this is Living Life with Lisa where we talk about living life with chronic illness. And I uh, apparently just started talking without telling you who I was. So if you've been around for a while, you know that I get off topic a lot because we don't spend our whole life talking about chronic illness, but that is what the, we do in this channel. And I uh, just got a text from uh, my oldest. He is uh, he's really opening some doors educationally for himself. And it's unbelievable I think that it's no it's not unbelievable it's purely believable he works his tail off um, but he has opportunity to go to Berkeley College this uh, this summer for eight days um, to work on engineering with their engineering department and he's all worried that um, it'll be hard on the family I don't know I forgot to put my mic in so I'm not sure if you're even hearing me but I'm gonna go on um, anyway I am um, was thinking yesterday that while I was at my dad's house that you know I grew up in a city and um, those of you that are in cities know that um, it's a lot different than not living in a city. <laughs> um, there's good and there's bad um, there's pros and there's cons to to both um, when I got in the city, I was loving it. I was loving the memories. I was loving um, eating at a uh, hamburger stand that I ate at it my whole life, off and on. Um, I even got the kids hooked on it one time when we were down there. And so I brought back sandwiches for them, and they've all but disappeared at this point. And I guess it was two days ago I went, because this is Wednesday, and we're on Monday. But, um, when I got there, I leave my, and I, but there, it's in my garage, so before anybody panics, don't. I leave my keys in my car. And, because now I live in the country. <laughs> and when I pulled up in the driveway of my dad's house, I thought, and I have one of those cars that the keys just have to be near it, and you push the button, and it starts. Um, this is the first car I've ever had like that, and it's mind-boggling when you think about it, but um, it's kind of cool. And so um, I hide the keys in the car, and then I just uh, push the button and go. So for a moment, I was getting in, starting to get out of the car, and this is mostly for <laughs> uh, Lisa Gauze. Um who comments regularly on here uh lisa and i went to high school together and 
um, somehow are related, but uh, somebody's going to have to draw us a map to where we can figure it out. But uh, <laughs> we're, we're exactly the same age. We graduated the same year, and we went to the same high school. And uh, what was funny about it is uh, they closed road down here, and she was talking about people driving crazy on these two roads. And I thought, what are the chances of somebody from my hometown living somewhere that has the same name roads and so i messaged her and i said where do you live and she told me and she's actually my neighbor now so <laughs> we're neighbors now and we went to high school together and somehow our cousins but um it's kind of a crazy line so anyway this is for her we had the same hometown and she warned me if i went down there to keep an eye on my stuff and um uh, I, our hometown, I'm going to just say it because um, I know she was afraid to put the name of the town on it, but um, I loved my hometown, and um, I love the people I went to school with. I love the people I knew growing up. Growing up. I, I love the whole experience of the city, um, but in the city, we actually, in school, in our in high school or junior high I don't even remember which um, were taught how to um, if we were home by ourselves what to do if somebody came to the door um, and it was um, needed it was very educational and what to say, what not to say, how to say it, how not to say it. Um, and just all kinds of little survival techniques about living in a city. And we also had our private, our, our individual. I, I grew up in Marion and we had a fantastic basketball team that won the state finals five years. Not, on, not in a row, but three of them were in a row. Um, back when it was real basketball, not class basketball. And... Um, like I said, I wouldn't talk, I wasn't going to talk about politics. Um, that in Indiana will cause a lot of fighting because I said, uh, real basketball before class basketball, because the people that are in favor of classic basketball did not like open class. And those of us that love open class hate class basketball. So, um, so fight with me if you want, uh, <laughs> So, um, anyway, so, you know, I was thinking, when I was in Marion, I pulled up the driveway, and I thought, well, I told my friend that was with me, I said, I feel weird leaving my keys in the car in Marion, because, um, that's just not something you do. I look awful. My hair has to grow a little bit, get my curls back, um, and, uh, I thought about it. I did, but I was going to be messing with keys and doing all kinds of stuff, and I was afraid I'd lose them. And so I went, and plus we were in the driveway. So I thought, well, you know, all the neighbors are, except for that one that doesn't know how to drain his septic system, or not septic. I keep saying septic, but it's uh, salt pump. And um, they're not going with my car. But you know, they're all elderly. They're not going to be be out there still in my car. And so uh, I left them in there. And and it was really hard. It was really hard to get out of that car, leaving those in there, because, you know, I was really debating. And that's the difference from being in a small town and in the city. And when I grew up, I moved to a city that had roughly 7,500 people. Well, now that city has ballooned, and I am between, it's not really a city, it's a big town. Um, it's over 20,000, I'm guessing. Um, it really is populated. The other town that we claim, we live in a country, um, I'm sure you know that, but if you want, have been following for very long, because you've seen my yard, and um, the cows and the chickens and the ducks and the pig that came over in the yard. 
on the neighbor's house, um, which was the coolest thing, except I put it on slow motion by accident to film it. But uh, that's me, not the pig. And so there's a big difference living out here and in a small community as opposed to living in a, a big city. And uh, the thing I noticed the most, I um, my first house I bought was in the lake area, um, kind of a resort kind of area, but we didn't have a zip code. So since we didn't have a zip code, um, we were part of another town that had a whopping 2,500 people. And I had just moved out there, had never been to the post office, <laughs> and I got a slip in the mail that said I had a package at the post office and they have these big windows out in front of the post office in this town that has 2,500 people and I lived out at the lake and uh, I went in or I got out parked my car and I turned to go in and before I got to the counter with my paper saying there was a package for me they had already seen me get out of the car went and got the package and met me at the counter with my package so, to this day, I do not know how they knew it was me. I honestly don't. I don't know how they knew it was me. And then I got to the point where um, the postmaster knew me by name. And we'd go in there and we'd have long talks. <laughs> and she, she knew everything about me. I didn't know nothing about her. But in the city... The, the funny thing, you know, because I came up here. This is my first job. This is the first place I came after, you know, moving. And in the city, you don't care what other people say. You don't care what other people think. You just do your thing. And, you know, and there's so many people that there's lots of people doing your thing, too, that you just have your own group. And it's just... uh I don't know. We just spend a lot of time not minding other people's business. <laughs> the topic of our conversations were never about the neighbors or what was going on. And that's because there was plenty of other things to talk about, I guess, because um, we always had school or we always had friends, you know, that we were doing stuff with. And, you know, when you're that age, everything's funny and it didn't have anything to do with you know, we didn't know what Gladys was doing two doors down. We, we didn't care. Uh, living in a small town, it's completely different. And when I first moved up here, my superintendent that hired me to teach told me to not, if I drink beer, not to leave my beer cans in the trash can. And um, he said, find somebody, uh, find somebody someplace else that... Uh, you can put them in. And so I thought about that a lot. And I don't drink beer. I'm not a teetotaler either, but I don't drink beer. But the point is, what he was saying was that my business in my, at home was everybody's business. And that uh, when I started teaching, which is back in the early 80s, we still had to sign the morality clause. And um, drinking, you know, I was 22, drinking was not allowed as it broke the moral code. code. And so um, he was just filling me in. And then the guy I was working with, because I came in as assistant band director, and the head band director told me, he said, don't ever talk about anybody because everybody's related. <laughs> well, there's a lot of truth in that statement. A whole lot of truth in that statement. So um, I decided that I wouldn't live in the district. And so I've always lived outside the district until 2010. And... We were running over here seven days a week, at least, or, or six days a week at least, and most, a lot of times seven. 
And so gas was getting high. It was back when um, we were having the housing problems. I don't really remember. Because I got money for buying this house. And it took forever to sell mine. And gas prices were outrageous. They were like up and over $3, almost $4 a gallon. I know you guys out in California are going, well, we're paying 6 now. I know. I know. But right the last time I bought gas, it was 208 So, um, and I need to buy it today, so I'm hoping it's still 208 <laughs> But, um, you know, it was taking 20 minutes to get to work it one way and 20 minutes to get back. And then I had the boys, and they were still really young, so... You know, I wasn't running over for them too much. But I wanted them to be able to ride the bus or be local and me not have to beg the school system to let them come. Because at that time, things have changed now. In Indiana, you can go to any school you want and without paying tuition. And uh, back then, it was district and you had to pay tuition to go. So, um, I had this house built and bought the property and we moved into the district. Well, I only lived here three years before my stroke and I wasn't able to uh, teach after that. But it helped because, you know, gas was low. Everything was local as far as, you know, getting people to school. But everybody knows your business. So yesterday, <coughs> excuse me. Yesterday what happened to me was, and if you're this person, um, uh, my email, I think, is in the um, description. I'm pretty sure my email is in the description. If you're this person, I'm sorry, um, I apologize, but uh, if it's you and you're watching this, either comment below, hey, that was me, or... Um, email me information but I went up to school to take Randy's golf drops and uh, I pulled up at the curb at the high school and I got out and I was ragged I still have well I do I still have my pajama bottoms on I don't change my pajama bottoms until um, it's time to go somewhere so well, even then, if I'm not getting out of the car, what's the point? And so I didn't know I was going to be getting out of the car. And so I'm going in, <laughs> I'm going into the school. And uh, the lady that got out of the car behind me was far enough back that it was, I couldn't hold the door for her. And so I went ahead and went in and I dropped off the stuff. And then the, the school secretary asked me how it was going and I said good and you know how are you I'm good you know kind of thing and I turned around and the woman that parked behind me um was walking out at the same time and she held the door for me to go out and I went out the first door and with her holding it and then there's three doors you have to get out and so the third door, second door I held and she and opened it for her and then she held the third door and I went out and we got out by the, close to the cars, almost to the cars, and she looked at me and she said, um, how's your fire, how's your fire damage coming along? I, I've never seen this woman before. If I have seen her before, she's gone from my memory, and I'm sorry. You know, if I know you, I'm so sorry that I don't remember you. Um, obviously, we run in some of the same circles if you're going to the same high school I am to drop off stuff for kids. Um, my apologies to you that I don't know who you are. But how does somebody that doesn't know me know about my fire damage? And I, but anyway, I said... I said, oh, it's great. I said, it's fixed already, except for two black shutters that have to be ordered, and they won't be in for a couple weeks, and they'll come and just screw those on the side of the house, and they'll be done. 
And she said, well, that's great. And I said, yes, it couldn't have happened any better than it did. And uh, she said, oh, I know. And I, somebody's watching over you. And I said, absolutely. I said, it had to be a God. It was a God thing for sure. And she said, absolutely it was. I'm glad it's all straightened out. And I said, thank you. And she got in her car and I got in my car. So, that's kind of a roundabout story about the difference between a city and a small town. Because it could be that I don't know her. <laughs> you know? But how she knows me, I don't know. Um, but the thing is, is that you can't keep secrets. You know, too much. And everybody, you know, I feel like I spill it all out here on YouTube. And I don't. Um, I spill a lot of it out on YouTube. But there is some um, private family things that um, aren't going on here. Um, I have two family secrets and one I said I would take both of them to the grave. Um, I did not take one of them to the grave but I just had to keep it long enough um, for my dad to pass. And so um, I told the secret to my eldest um, <laughs> and um, I told him before my dad left passed away and uh, it just came up in conversation and I said don't you dare tell him don't you dare tell him because it, it will it'll crush it'll crush him I think and um, so and, and it's really an innocent thing it's not you know it's not a big deal but to him it had been a big deal but it's not a big deal and it affects me more than it does them and doesn't bother me none so um, the other one, um, I would planned to take to my death until, um, unless the dementia gets so bad that I tell it and people just think that, oh, she's just talking, you know, she doesn't know what she's talking about because she's out of her mind. <laughs> so then they won't know what's true and what's not true. And so I would like to keep it that way. Um, and it has to do with, uh, our, uh, my mom's side of the family kept a lot of secrets, um, and took them to the grave. And for those of you in the family, this does not have anything to do with that part of the family. It doesn't have anything to do with the other part of the family. Um, it has to do with my family. And so, um... It's just not going to happen. But, um, you know, so I don't tell everything I know, but I do tell a lot. I do tell a lot. And I don't even know what I should call this video. We're already on 23 minutes, and my attention span has been awful today. I have tried to watch YouTube, and YouTube's not very long. It's not like a TV show. And, um... Uh, I just, I can't take it very long, <laughs> so I shut it off, and I was trying to take a nap, didn't want to take a nap, so I got up and did that, and then I, you know, I'm just, I'm feeling antsy today, I don't know why, because I don't usually get antsy, um, but I got two shots in my lower back yesterday, and they hurt like crazy, uh, they hurt, started hurting last night, and, um, I think maybe that's why I'm not comfortable, I'm not able to keep my attention going because if I sit in the chair, it hurts real bad, and if I lay down, it hurts real bad, and if I stand up, it hurts real bad, so this kind of hurts real bad all the time, and um, I hope it works, but he got one of the shots right, I think he got it right in the nerve that was the issue. And, I mean, it was hydrocortisone. And, I mean, man, you know, I've had them before and they don't, you know, they usually make me feel better. But this one is like, mmm. But it takes time to get through the system, I guess. It did take a couple of days last time, but I don't remember being as painful. Uh... But anyway, that has nothing to do with the price of rice in China. 
And so, um, I'm going to let you go and hope I didn't waste 24 minutes of not knowing exactly what I'm talking about because I keep changing the subject and going back and forth and doing different things that I have not been talking with no sound. I do have the mic on this camera and I remember thinking I didn't like that because it was tingy or something like that. And so I apologize for my parents today and my rambling, but you know what? I may do another one because people said share your feelings and I feel like talking today, so I guess I'll talk. <laughs> so, uh, city versus small town will be today. Remember, live life to the fullest, live life with no regrets, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.